Oswald Lainard. Husband, father of four, grandfather of four, brother, friend, true master of the violin. His life has been full and colorful, and his story is best told through his history with music. Oswald, affectionately known by his immediate family and friends as Ozzy, has led a musically dominated life. His journey has been an amazing one. Ozzy was born on February 12, 1932 in Kenosha, Wisconsin, the oldest of five children. Five and a half years later, the second sibling, Brother Napoli, was born, followed in 1940 by Brother Monrico, Sister Tosca in 1943, and in 1946, Brother Kanye. His siblings were brought up, calling him by the German pronunciation of his name, Uswald. All of the siblings were named after characters in operas due to their parents' love of the medium. All siblings are still living, with the exception of younger brother Napoli, a deep loss for Ozzy and the whole family. Ozzy was the first in his family to be born and raised in the U.S. His Hungarian mother, Catherine, had been born in the United States, but returned to Hungary before her first birthday. And she grew up in her gypsy village in Hungary until she returned as an 18-year-old. His father, Oswald Lehnert Sr., was born and raised in Germany until coming to the United States for the first time as a young adult. Ozzy and all his siblings referred to their parents as Pa and Ma. Pa Lehnert was born in 1907 in Kirchheim Anzig, Germany, a part of Betzdorf County. Coming from a poor family, as soon as he was old enough to discover his beautiful voice, he sang European folk songs on street corners to earn money for food for his family. Pa was the middle child of five siblings, with brothers Willie, Henrik, Alfred, and sister Gertrude. In 1929, at the age of 22, he traveled by boat to the United States in order to make and send home more money for his family. A hard worker with a tremendous work ethic, he worked as a delivery man for a bakery and painted houses. Catherine Lehnert, who would later be known as Ma to her children, was born on May 11, 1908 in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where some of her extended family had already established themselves. She moved back to Hungary to live with her family when she was only a year old. She had one brother and one sister, and in 1914, when Catherine was only six years old, her father was called to duty into the Austrian War. Catherine would later describe to her children and grandchildren the very special doll her father gave her on the day he left on the train to go to war. And she remembers him waving to her and the rest of the family as he departed on the train. It never occurred to little Catherine that this moment in time would be the last time she ever saw her father. He was killed almost instantly in the war, devastating the family. Some years later, her mother remarried and brought another half-sister into Catherine's family. When Catherine was 23 years old, she attended a dance at the German American Club. It was at that event when the opera singing painter Oswald Lehnert spotted her across the room, walked over to her, bowed, clicked his heels together, and asked her for a little waltz. Little did she know that Oswald would eventually become her husband. In February of 1931, Oswald and Catherine were married in an informal ceremony at the local courthouse. They wasted no time in starting a family, and on February 12, 1932, Oswald II was born. Just prior to young Ozzy's birth, Paul Lehnert had become the solo tenor of the opera company, learned to speak Italian, and then brought the American Opera Company to Kenosha. He 
Young Ozzy, who was referred to by his parents as Little Osvaldo, had almost six years to himself as an only child before the next sibling was born. He was smothered by attention and was thrust into the musical career that his father had always dreamed of having for himself. In 1938, Baby Napoli was born. By this time, Ozzy Jr. had become known for his singing talents and remembers in particular his performances of his favorite piece called The Little Red Wagon, which consisted of his rolling a wagon onto the stage and singing the song beautifully. The newspaper articles started writing about him as the Wonder Kid. At six years old, he starred in Major Bo's Jamboree. It was about then that he began studying the violin already playing in recitals by seven years old. His career as a violinist had officially begun. He played a concert before the Senior Treble Clef Club of Beloit and appeared on the Sax Amateur Hour. He also attained a prestigious honor with the National Federation of Music Clubs. During her childbearing years, Ma continued to care for the family and also joined her husband singing folk songs on the Hans and Fritz European radio show. Early in 1940, Monrico was born, and then 18 months later in 1943, La Tosca, the first and only girl, came along, and then in 1946, Baby Cogno, the fifth and final, completed the Lanyard Bunch. The family was close but extremely poor, in part because this was a time period immediately following the Great Depression. So their family time and entertainment came from holding musical nights at home, where they sang folk songs and ate delicious Hungarian and German food. It was a special way to be together as a family, and Ozzy remembers these nights with great fondness. At seven years old, Ozzy began studying with his very first teacher, Helen Tower. Impressed by his level of talent, she taught Ozzy for the next three to four years and then introduced him to her own teacher, Leon Samatini, at about the age of 11. This began a four-year stint of riding the train back and forth every weekend from Kenosha to Chicago by himself to study with Leon. He would then come back for the school week and head back out to Chicago again every weekend. He also continued to play in competitions, and in one of them, the Ladies Club Kenosha competition, he took first prize. This win granted him a scholarship to the Interlochen Festival. Once he arrived at the Interlochen Festival, he was awarded the position of concertmaster of the orchestra and then also won the concerto competition, which enabled him to play the Bruch Concerto with the orchestra. During his time there, he studied with Otakar Chadik. By this time, the newspapers were featuring article after article about the fabulous child prodigy singer turned violin virtuoso. On one school week trip home, at about 13, Ozzy had a bicycle accident. He distinctly remembers the doctor wrapping wires around his fingers and pulling all the crooked bones straight again. Soon after, he resumed his commute for lessons. During his time off on those weekends, he began sneaking into the Chicago opera houses to watch performances, and one day ended up sitting next to the well-known critic, Claudia Cassidy, who coincidentally ended up writing his review a few short years later, when he was the soloist with the Chicago Symphony. By the age of 15, Ozzy won the Stars of Tomorrow, a Chicago radio show which came with a $500 prize, a significant amount of money in 1948. Also at 15, John Weicker, concertmaster of the Chicago Symphony, got Ozzy entered into another competition that Ozzy won first prize in once again. This led to the prestigious recognition and opportunity for a young man of only 15 years of age to play as soloist with the Chicago Symphony. John Micah was concertmaster, and the orchestra under the baton of the intimidating and well-known conductor Fritz Reiner. This was a big moment in Oswald Lehnert's career as a soloist. 
Odakar Chadak eventually led Ozzy to the prestigious teacher Ivan Glamian. Glamian was able to get the 16-year-old Ozzy a full scholarship to Juilliard. This young man in his mid-teens is now headed for Juilliard, fully paid for by the famous school. Once he arrived at Juilliard, he took an apartment with some friends on Claremont Avenue. While there, he met Miss Green in Long Branch, New Jersey. She had known Paul Lehnert in his opera singing days and took Ozzy under her wing and let him move into her home. Ozzy has fond memories of Miss Green and she became an important role model in his life. He began commuting on the train between Long Branch, New Jersey and Juilliard, New York. He then added ballet to his already rigorous schedule and signed up for ballet classes with Jose Limon. Now at almost 18, he was the soloist with the Shore Symphony Orchestra in Red Bank, New Jersey. It was a huge success. The newspaper review after his concert, where Ozzy played the Vianowski Concerto No. 2, read, If Lehner's performance of the difficult concerto is any indication, an extremely brilliant future is in store for this young violinist. Immediately upon turning 18, Ozzy was drafted into the Korean War and went to West Point. Fortunately, he was able to join the orchestra and become both concertmaster and a soloist as part of special services instead of having to go to combat. This was a blessing, as Ozzy had very strong feelings about the whole concept of war. What the alternative would have been, no one will ever know. He served four years at West Point and still recalls his military number, 1221327. During his West Point years, Ozzy had the privilege of performing many different concertos for many dignitaries, including the Queen of Greece and many others. His job also included auditioning almost everyone who was trying for a spot in the orchestra. Ozzy was extremely generous with the auditionees and helped them to avoid potentially losing their lives in combat. He also continued his schooling at Juilliard during his time at West Point. As with any normal 19 to 21 year old, Ozzy had his share of incidences of misbehavior. He managed to teach other string players how to slip flasks into their instruments and run straws out to enjoy a string cocktail now and then. On the occasion that he got caught doing things he wasn't supposed to, the standard punishment was to have to peel potatoes for hours on end. On one of these occasions, Ozzy thought he had discovered a shortcut and left the potatoes in the machine for too long until foaming spuds started creeping out of the machine and across the entire floor. Probably the most memorable of all was at West Point when his car lost the brakes while driving on the base and he went off a steep road landing perfectly on the nose of the car with the tail lights sticking straight up in the air. After Ozzy's exciting but exhausting years at West Point, he went back to Juilliard for a couple of months and then went on tour through 26 countries after being hired by the Robert Shaw Chorale. In a four to five month period alone, he recalls performing in Cyprus, Greenland, Israel, Lebanon, Egypt, Turkey, and the Scandinavian countries, and then continuing on through all of Europe. After West Point and the extensive tour with the Robert Shaw Chorale, Ozzy was ready for a major break. He rallied his brother Napoli, and the two of them did their best to shape up the beater car they had and headed for what was supposed to be a long road trip to Mexico. As fate would have it, the car never made it over the border. Instead, it broke down near Anaheim, California, and with no money to fix it or get another car, they had no choice but to settle in where they landed. Ozzy was still tired of music and determined to take a break, so he began looking for other temporary employment. His first job was as an inside salesman at the Beacon Van and Storage. He then took a job as the assistant manager in the shoe sales department at Montgomery Wards, and then kept that job for at least a year. But he began to really miss music and decided to join the Anaheim Symphony in addition to his job as shoe salesman. 
When he showed up for his first rehearsal, 25 years old, dark and handsome, the featured solist just happened to be nationally known pianist Doris Pridnov. The 20-year-old Doris, with her long black hair flowing down her back, was leaning against a backstage prop looking sexy and confident and puffing away on a cigarette. Bold when it came to approaching women, Ozzy wasted no time in going in for the kill. The perfect opening line rolled off his tongue. I think we should play sonatas together. In the summer of 1957, Ozzy participated in the Meadowmount Music Festival while Doris played at the Aspen Music Festival. They became engaged in 1957. Doris believes that her impressive Thanksgiving dinner, coupled with Ozzy's fondness for food, played a significant role in the engagement timing. Doris had come to the East Coast audition for a scholarship at Juilliard at the request of Rosina Levine. She was awarded that scholarship and began her studies with Levine. Ozzy moved out there to be near and took a position at the Hartford Conservatory. On January 25, 1958, Oswald Lehnert, then 25 years old, and Doris Pridnoff, 21 years old, became husband and wife. They had a very small ceremony in a friend's apartment. Enrico, who was living on a boat with Ozzy, stood his best man, and Doris's friend, Teresa, was her maid of honor. While still residing in the little attic apartment, Doris continued at Juilliard, still studying with Rosina Levine. After the marriage, they moved to Connecticut, and Levine managed to keep Doris as a student through a special studies program. Doris drove 200 miles round trip for her once per week lesson during the next year and a half after the marriage. Ozzy was playing in the Hartford Conservatory Quartet and also in the Hartford Symphony. Almost exactly one year after they got married, both of them got jobs teaching at the Hartford Conservatory. These new careers afforded them a move to an inexpensive little house in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Towards the end of 1960, Doris discovered she was pregnant with their first child, and on June 17, 1961, a baby daughter named Mara came along. Doris was told by doctors that she could not get pregnant again as long as she was nursing, so she continued to play concerts, nursing between rehearsals. It turned out that the doctor was wrong because when Mara was only two months old, Doris found out she was pregnant once again. Ozzy's sister Tosca came out to stay with Ozzy and Doris for about four months, helping to care for Mara and helping with the house as a backup to Doris. Approximately a month before Baby 2 arrived, Ozzy traveled to Russia to compete in the Tchaikovsky competition, a competition that had been won by Van Cliburn four years earlier. At the competition, Ozzy was in first place after the first round, and then during the second round, for no apparent reason, his hands went numb and he couldn't hear. Since there was no explanation of what had happened, and there was no way to fix it either, he had to pull out of the competition with a certificate of honor. However, it was at that competition that he met cellist Jurgen Delemos, who would later become his cellist in the Pablo Casals Trio. Within approximately 10 days after returning home, on May 24th, Ozzy Jr. was born. Only two weeks later, Ozzy and Doris's German shepherd, Nicky, unexpectedly gave birth to nine puppies. About a month later, Joseph Zagetti, the famous violinist who had been one of the judges in the Tchaikovsky competition, invited Ozzy to Switzerland to study with him for the summer. Clearly the timing wasn't ideal, but it appeared to be an opportunity that couldn't be passed up. Doris asked a friend to stay with her during Ozzy's absence, obviously needing backup for herself with two babies and 11 dogs. The nine puppies required five feedings per day, not to mention having a newborn and a one-year-old to care for. While in Switzerland, Ozzy decided to take a day to climb Mount El Diablo, still a source of contention with Doris and a deep regret of Ozzy's. The idea of his climbing a mountain named Devil Mountain, not to mention that he wasn't a climber in the first place, 
was not exactly appealing to Doris at home holding down the fort with the babies and puppies. The lady helping Doris became ill, and Doris's best friend Jeannie came with her own kids to back Doris up, and when she saw what Doris was trying to contend with, sent an immediate telegram to Ozzie that said, quote, Get the hell home. In 1963, Ozzie began teaching at the University of Connecticut, and on March 22, 1964, their second son and third child, Votan, was born. Then on May 15, 1965, baby Franz came along, the last of the four children. Ozzie continued to work at the University of Connecticut for the next five years, where he would frequently perform as a soloist and also as a duo with Doris. In 1966, Ozzie went for the first time to the Marlboro Summer Music Festival, and the whole family came out for a visit. In 1967, the whole family joined him for the entire summer at the festival. It was there that they met the cellist Pablo Casals, who took an immediate liking to both Ozzy and the family, and invited the Lehnerts to Puerto Rico for the 1969 Pablo Casals Music Festival. Also in mid-1967, the family made a decision to leave Connecticut and head for California. Ozzy bought a full-size school bus, painted it dark green, and started renovating it into a camper in preparation for the trip. His brother Monrico also converted a school bus. Ozzy and Monrico packed up the families and hit the road with the buses with Doris following in a little red Volkswagen bug. The first destination was Wisconsin, where Monrico decided to settle in, while Doris and the kids flew to California to Doris's parents' house. Ozzy got word that a position had opened up at the School of Music at CU Boulder and wanted to check it out on the way. He hit the road towards California in the school bus, towing a dune buggy. It was during that CU Boulder audition that Ozzy met pianist Paul Parmley, who was already on the faculty, and he and Jimmy Shroud told Ozzy to call Warner Imig, the dean of the music school. Ozzy had an unpleasant first conversation with the dean, so he scribbled down his contact information on a napkin, crumpled it up, and left it with him. He then hit the road again in the hippie bus to head for California to join up with the family, and nearly lost his life when his brakes went out going over Donner Pass. It was an extremely close call and a miracle that he somehow maintained control and wasn't hurt. The family then regrouped in Long Beach, California. Dean Imig did not have much of a sense of humor about the crumpled napkin, but within a week he called Ozzy anyway and offered him a follow-up interview for a one-year job. The dean was surprised to learn that Ozzy had already headed to California, so he literally conducted his interview while Ozzy sat on Newport Beach. A week later, the family climbed back aboard the school bus and headed for Boulder, Colorado to their summer house supplied by the university in Chautauqua Park. Sometime during the stay in Chautauqua, the University of Austin began pursuing Ozzy for a full-time position. CU felt the competition and ended up offering Ozzy a full-time associate professor teaching position. In 1969 and 1970, the whole Leonard family lived in Puerto Rico for about a month for both summers. The Pablo Casals Festival housed families in the beachfront Hilton Hotel. Ozzy, Paul Parmley, and Jurgen de Lemos were privately coached by Pablo Casals himself, and it was the summer of 1970 that Ozzy asked for and was formally granted Casals' name for their trio. The Pablo Casals Trio became nationally and internationally recognized, touring the whole nation and the world over the next several decades. In 1972, Ozzy was offered the job as conductor of the Boulder Philharmonic Orchestra. At that time, the orchestra was very small, a group of volunteer musicians who performed in the Boulder High School Auditorium. 
At the start of Ozzy's time there, combined ticket sales and donations equaled less than $20,000 annually. So Ozzy went to work. The job paid him nothing, but he had a huge passion to develop it and make it something big. He set out on a mission to improve the content and quality of the concerts and auditioned some new members to improve overall musicianship. He spoke with and enlisted the Boulder Ballet and began the annual tradition that remains today, five performances of the Nutcracker Ballet over Thanksgiving weekend. He began a tradition called Symphony Sundays and started the annual Christmas concerts. He used his multitude of connections, both directly and indirectly, to begin bringing in international soloists. The addition of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony with the full Boulder Chorale became a highlight of several seasons. with David Birch and others to develop much stronger board members, local support, both business and personal, and greatly improved overall marketing. The size of the audiences grew and the Philharmonic concerts had to be moved to Mackey Auditorium. At the end of his reign in 1997, nearly 25 years later, Mackey Auditorium was sold out for almost every concert and the ending annual budget was well over a million dollars. In the fall of 1979, Doris joined Ozzy as a faculty member at the CU School of Music. Meanwhile, the Pablo Casals trio continued concertizing with pianist Larry Graham in the place of the since deceased Paul Parmalee. Doris and Ozzy also frequently toured and played concerts as the Lehnert duo, and Ozzy Sr., Ozzy Jr., and Doris had the pleasure of working with each other as the Lehnert trio, playing several concerts nationally. In the 80s and 90s, Ozzy and Doris went on major tours and played in Singapore, the Philippines, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, Korea, Taiwan, Japan, and numerous venues across the U.S. In 2006 and 7, they performed in Germany, Austria, and the Czech Republic, and on a two-month tour aboard the Royal Viking ship line.
In the summer of 1983, Ozzy started a summer music camp called LAMA, the Lanard Academy of Music and Arts, which ran from 1983 to 1988. Ozzy Doris and Ozzy Jr. all went up to the camp each summer, coaching kids and putting on concerts. Then in 1988, Ozzy Sr. added the Elder Hostel Chamber Music Camp, which lasted for 20 years. He also co-founded the Breckenridge Music Festival, known then as Bach, Beethoven, and Breckenridge. Finally, at the age of 80 years old, Oswald Lehnert officially retired after 44 years at the University of Colorado, with 25 of those years overlapping with his conductorship of the Boulder Phil. His retirement from CU was immediately followed by concerts with the Homestead Orchestra in Finland and Russia. Ozzy's stunning performance of the Carmen Fantasy at the Shmolny Cathedral in St. Petersburg brought the Russian crowd to their feet once again, exactly 50 years after the Tchaikovsky competition. Nazi Jr. continue to play benefit concerts for the homeless, basketball teams from inner city multiracial schools, and anything that would help an underdog. There may be some with the world's most impeccable technique, but that is no substitute for being able to bring the violin to life and have it touch the deepest parts of one's soul. That is what Oswald Alfred Lehnert can do.